The weather over the southern atolls of the Maldives is not what the brochure promised. Strong winds and high waves are beating down on the small island of Kudu. Mohamed Didi, manager of the local fish processing plant, is coming up to inspect the island's erosion now threatening his guest residence. If we are not able to take uh, preventive measures, then within a couple of years' time, I think uh, it, will be, it will be disappear very much area of this land and the uh, sea will come to closer to guest house. From the air, it's easy to see why Maldivians are worried about climate change. The highest natural point in these islands is around two meters above sea level, and that's the lowest for any country in the world. With alarming predictions of global sea level rise, and most of its islands only one meter high, the Maldives could be in deep trouble very soon. It's not surprising then, the country was the first to sign up to the Kyoto Climate Protocol in 1997. Dr. Mohammed Ali at the Maldives Ministry for the Environment is deeply concerned about the country's future. Now the population is going to be affected in all aspects, either through ruined economy, impacts on infrastructure, uh, impacts on the uh, future hopes, because we see a lot of prospect in tourism, but if tourists do not come, there's no way that we can develop that uh, would allow for growth or prosperity in the country. At the many island paradise resorts, all still seems well on the surface. But with many tourists visiting the Maldives for its spectacular underwater world, the country's main source of income could also soon be under threat. Reef building corals are extremely sensitive. A sudden rise in seawater temperatures during the 1998 El Nino event resulted in a massive coral die off. In many places, the damage is still visible, presenting a stark reminder of what may lie ahead if the planet continues to heat up. When the devastation of the 2004 tsunami reached all the way to the Maldives, the incredible vulnerability of this island kingdom was all of a sudden made undeniably clear. Male, the nation's capital, is at least surrounded by a three-meter high wall to break the forces of incoming waves. It was only through funding from Japan, a country familiar with the struggle against the sea, that this project could be financed. But the capital is just one of more than 200 inhabited islands in this archipelago. With Male already suffering from severe overpopulation, the question rises where all these people are going to live. Hulhul Male, a short ferry ride from the capital, is the country's most ambitious land reclamation project. It's an entirely man-made island built up to an average height of two meters above the sea. By 2020, this will be home to around 150,000 Maldivians. While the Maldives cannot pay to protect all its islands, it can also not afford to wait for the rest of the world to take action against climate change. So where's the choice? What is the choice? What can we do? I think we have to be very brave. We have to do whatever we can. We have to call to the attention of the world, the plight that we are in. And we all have to work together. We all have a role in this. We all have a stake. We are all in this. And let's all work together. With great interest, the Maldives are following the current negotiations to renew the Kyoto Climate Protocol. And one of the world's smallest nations will have to make its voice heard to prevent this island kingdom from going under. <laughs>